you think of Airbnb and Lyft as social media companies because of the peer-to-peer -peer nature, then peer-to-peer -peer technologies of all sorts could be a potential next wave in tech. That includes, of course, the blockchain. For more insight on that, Reggie Middleton is on the show. He's the founder of peer-to-peer -peer company Veritasium. Ed first asked for his thoughts on where the blockchain technology is right now, and here is what he had to say. Well, first of all, I'd like to get this out. I think blockchain technology and Bitcoin itself is probably the most misunderstood technology um, or popular wave um, that I know of. Um, a lot of people eschew Bitcoin because of what they read in the media, and they should you know, realize, with all due respect to Boom Bust, which is, of course, a stand-up uh, media outlet or entity, but the media does not necessarily report on empirical fact, they attempt to sell impressions and eyeballs. So when they read something, they take it as fact. Um, the Bitcoin network is still going, is as strong as it ever was. Um, uh, computational hash power, basically the security behind it, is now 30% higher than it was historically ever, and it's still progressing. Uh, blockchain technology, which is the technology that underlies the Bitcoin network, is getting a lot of attention and a lot of money, but most of that attention and most of that money is going in the wrong direction. It's going to basically bolster the back end of legacy bank systems. Um, blockchain technology is a peer-to-peer -peer technology. Basically, the invention is the paradigm shift, the aha moment for blockchain technology and Bitcoin is to enable Peter to do business with Paul when Paul is on the other side of the world and Peter doesn't know Paul and Paul doesn't know Peter. They can exchange value and they can do business with each other without the risk of loss or fraud or without each one taking or cheating the other one. That is an invention that just didn't, or a possibility that didn't exist before. This is done peer-to-peer -peer, and most importantly, this is done without a third party. So you don't need a bank, an adjudicator, a court, a judge, or anybody else, or a referee. They can do business on a trust-free basis directly. Now, let me, you take let me ask you a question that I hear, though, because you said something earlier on there that I thought was interesting with regard to the banks, that a lot of the investments going to the bank. Because, you know, I think Bitcoin and blockchain were the first salvo and high-profile fintech disruption. My question to you, therefore, is, is how is the financial community uh, talking, uh, how are they taking uh, to Bitcoin technology, how are they talking about it? Do they think it's nonsense or do they perceive it as a potential disruptive technology? Okay, so on the surface, from a PR public relations perspective, they want to invest in it because A, they don't understand it and I think vendors are pushing this as a panacea for a lot of the bank's clearing issues. Um, basically, if you integrate this into your back end, you could clear faster, you can settle trades faster, et cetera. Um, a lot of the executives that I've talked to, one to one, um, off the record, say it's a bunch of malarkey and BS. Um, the reason they think that way, and I agree with them as the way it's been sold to them, is because you're taking, the vendors are taking peer-to-peer -peer technology and they're forcing it into a client-centric world, a hub-and-spoke world where it's centralized. So, of course, it doesn't make sense to a lot of banks. But I explained to a bank executive just yesterday, a very high up one of the most powerful banks, if you take the peer-to-peer -peer technology and you give it to the peers, it works perfectly. The problem is it cuts the banks totally out of the, situa out of the equation because if you have peer-to-peer, -peer, you don't need a third party. Now, when I explained this to the bank executive, he got it immediately. Right. Okay, because it makes plenty of sense. Now the question is, how do the banks survive in a peer-to-peer -peer world? Well, from a transactional perspective, is where almost all the banks' uh, revenues and profits come from, they're in trouble because transaction expenses can be driven close to zero across the board. So banks, as we know it, within eight to 10 years are gonna cease to exist. That doesn't mean banks are going to cease to exist, but their business model has to change. Just like the media company's business model either had to change with the advent of the internet and the MP3 and MP4, and those that didn't change for, fell to the wayside. Same thing with advertising companies, and we could go all the way down the line. So. Um, Bank execs are, um, there, there's some trepidation, there's some excitement, but there's a lot of confusion. 
um, as we start to apply the peer-to-peer -peer technology, and I have hedge funds and family offices who are actually trading through our platform peer-to-peer, -peer, and they're not touching a bank or exchange or anything else. As we create a consortium and the more entities that trade peer-to-peer, -peer, the more the banks get the message. Of course, the way, if you look at financial history, um, as we just explained as well, institutions that are making a lot of money refuse to cannibalize their own revenues. They basically wait until somebody else cannibalizes the revenues. I'm betting that the banks will do the same thing, except right. for maybe one or two. And, and you know, the, the fact that you mentioned that, you told me earlier that Facebook is applying for a banking license in the U.S. And, you know, you mentioned earlier today that Facebook, Google, and Amazon are trusted by millennials more than J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, and that, of course, they don't have the same high cost structure. Is, is the financial services industry in real trouble here from a shareholder's perspective? It is in significant trouble. You know, the, the, the biggest problem, the weak point where our startup addresses the financial industry is this. Wall Street has one fixed cost that no other industry has and Wall Street cannot eliminate it, and that's compensation. Between 40 and 55% of gross revenues are paid out to the employees. That, that only leaves half the money to run the business. So the technology industry, uh, social media, there is no industry that has such a high fixed cost. Combine that with a very um, arcane legacy system that's basically obsolete. And combined with heavy regulation, which used what did serve to protect the banks, but will slow them down. as technology progresses, and they're in true trouble. Add to a cyclical and structural high due to regulation and you know the bank bailouts and failures with NPL still on the books. Combine even more with the fact that the new generation simply trusts such social media and technology companies better than banks, and banks have a lot going against them, a lot. Um, and that's not even um, broaching the fact of peer-to-peer -peer technology enabling um, business to be done without the banks. Even without that, banks have a problem. With that, banks are, uh, sh are not quite short. In between short and medium term, extreme short. I'm well, bearish on it. Interesting, you know, because if you look at banks in general, because you talked about the MPLs, Reggie, you see a decline in charge-offs, okay, and, and an increase in non-interest financial earnings, meaning big banks are basically they're arguably trying to keep their earnings up by under-provisioning for these future losses and by moving into higher risk activities. How do you see these financial institutions doing in the next cyclical downturn? Um, next to quick downturn, it should be coming right about now. Interest rate volatility is almost guaranteed. You're at negative rates through between the you occur between one and five years, and the vast majority of the EU states, you're negative. Okay, a reversion in mean as it goes positive, you're going to have volatility. Um, if it stays negative, you're going to potentially have volatility in, in the commodity markets, which we have now, and then you have the equity markets, which you've seen increase with our earnings increase. Banks, in general, are not uh, above normal traders. They, um, trading markets do very well in upturns. They do very bad when volatility spikes.
I can't see volatility in that's backing. Um, commodities, interest rates being controlled by everything except for natural economic forces, um, central planning from central banks, et cetera. Um, banks simply have an issue. And when you move to the higher risk transactional, um, we move away from transactional interest bearing profits into trading in high risk areas, it's inconsistent. Even if they do a, do a, good, do a good job, it's pretty much unpredictable. 